Yes, I mean, if you look at the global economy today and developed markets in that universe, definitely there seem to be pockets of recovery and a lot of that coming in from the US. So from our perspective here in Asia, and I represent our Asian investment team at Fidelity, uh, there are definitely positive implications for emerging markets, uh, especially some of the exporters in Asia. Um, having said that, when we look at the emerging markets today, things are quite different when you look at two to three years back. And in spite of, you know, developed markets, yes, outperforming, the economy is doing well, uh, the old export-led model of growth is kind of passe. So when, from my perspective, from an Asian perspective, when we look at implications at our markets, our sectors, our companies, uh, we are really looking at plays which are about domestic reform, uh, companies which are likely to be beneficiaries of that, and at the same time strike a balance in our portfolio between both exporters as well as domestic oriented stories. Uh, when we look at, uh, you know, the new government, the new leadership, yes, there's a lot of euphoria in the market. We think there should be three, we expect three main points to come in from uh, this new leadership. The first is about improving India's economic fundamentals. That means addressing some of the sticky issues such as containing the twin deficits. You know, uh, India's always had uh, relatively higher levels of inflation relative to some of the Asian peers. Uh, so, so basically addressing some of these issues. Secondly, it's about improving growth or kickstarting growth. And the only way to do that would be via economic reforms, which is the third part. So when we look at what's happened in the country over the past few years, we see almost uh, projects worth around 7.8 to 8 percent of GDP waiting on the sidelines. Even if the government opens the tap and a trickle of that is released, it would mean an immediate kickstart to growth. So as long as three, these three areas are addressed, by the current, uh, by the new leadership, we think that this market or this economy is on to its next phase of growth. Yeah. So when you look at growth, uh, you know, yes, growth has been stuck in this range at its lows in India. Uh, but when we compare India to, say, some of the other countries such as China, it's not just about the absolute growth number, but it's about the structural reforms, deep domestic structural reforms driving growth. Now, as long as that is evident from the new government's policy, we think uh, things are still going to look OK. But when we look at India, there's definitely no magic wand. Uh, you know, there are several vested interests. There are state level issues that need to be addressed. At the same time, India should make sure, the government should make sure that we don't get into this boom bust cycle, which we've seen in the past. And for that not to happen, we've really got to address three things. One is about fiscal reform, uh, you know, improving labor productivity and kickstarting the infrastructure cycle. Now, as long as these three factors are, uh, are addressed in a meaningful manner, we think that growth would definitely move up to the next stage. Uh, six to seven percent is what the street is uh, estimating it's well understood by us it's well understood by most investors but it's really I'm, I keep coming back to and that's the reform agenda that ne needs to be kick-started <laughs>